episode, we're going to look at notifications, which this gem is a Rails engine and it's mountable within your application. And one thing that I really like about this gem is that they leave a lot of the views up to you to create just so it meshes very well and fluently into your application. It's very minimal as far as the feature set goes, but given its flexibility, it can also be very powerful. So we'll start off with a simple application and it's going to have device as the user authentication. So users must be authenticated to receive notifications. It's also going to have a user has many posts and then a post can have many comments. And so for a quick tour of the app, we have our users index as our default route. We can log in, we can sign up. And once we enter in our information and sign up, it takes us back and you can see now we have a user created. Under the user, we can see that this user has zero posts. And let's say if we want to create a new post, once we create the new post, we have our content and then a comment can be added. And so whenever a comment is added, I want the author of the post to receive a in-app notification. So once we create comment, you can see that this comment has been set and it's been set on this post. So this user should receive a notification. I'm not going to get into too much detail of the existing setup, but just know that we do have three nested routes, the user, and then the post, and then the comments. I'm not saying that this is the best architecture for this kind of feature, but we'll get the idea across with the notifications. And then I have the device for the users, and I'm just doing a very bare minimal setup with device. And then for our user model, a user has many posts, and it also has many comments, and we also have the default device stuff in there. The post belongs to a user and it has many comments. And a comment belongs to the post and it also belongs to a user. And this user is going to be the person who created the comment and we can get the author of the post through the post user. So within our gem file, the first thing that we'll do is add the gem notifications and be sure to run bundle restart your Rails application. And once we've done that, we can run the Rails generate notifications and then install. And this is going to create a few different files. It's going to create within our config initializers a notifications.rb, which we can use to configure the default behavior of the notifications. It creates the model and it also adds into our route the mount notifications engine to the notifications path. And it also copies the migrations from the engine into our own application so we can run our migrations with the rails db migrate which will create our notifications table as well as some indexes and if we look at our schema we can see our notifications tables created here and there's several different columns and right off the bat we can see that it's using a few different target types so it has a third target second target and a target and each one of these has a type and id so this might reference something like a post and then the ID of the post, or it could also be a user or something like that. So it's very flexible in what we can do here. But one thing I find that could be lacking is that there's no indexes on the target type and the target ID and the second targets and the third targets, which as this grows, it could slow down the database a bit. But then we have the user ID, which is the user who is receiving the notification. And then the actor ID is going to be referencing the user who is creating the notification. So what event has someone done that generates the notification? And then the user ID is the person who is going to receive that notification. And then you have the notification type. And this is going to be used in a couple of different ways. And the main way is to render out the partial that is being called for whenever a notification is viewed. And so within our models folder, we have our notification.rb that was generated. And it's a simple class inheriting from the active record base. And it just includes the notifications model. And so within here, if you have anything relating to the notifications, you can create custom methods. Within the config initializers notifications.rb file, we have our notifications configuration, which it has a few different options for generating the user class, the username method, any kind of avatar. And then it has a user profile URL method, which this is just going to return the user's profile. And if you're using device, there's nothing else that you have to do. But if you're not using device, then you will need to override the authenticate user method. 
and by default it is set to the authenticate user with the bang but you may need to change this based on whatever kind of authentication method you're doing and then you also need a reference to the current user and in this case because we are using device in this example again current user is correct if you ever familiarize yourself with rails engines then you would have come across this method main underscore app and then followed by whatever kind of method. And this main app is referencing to our application that we've developed. So even though this is a device method for the edit user registration path, and within our menu structure, I found that we would have to call the main app here because the Rails engine for the notifications is using our same default layout. So once a comment has been created, then we want to generate our notification. So we're going to use a callback. So we'll use the after commit. And then we'll have a method called create notifications. And we only want to do this on create. All right, so then within our create notifications method, we can create a new notification. And this notification type is going to be a post. So within our schema, if you remember, we had a notified type, and we're just gonna set this to a post. And then we need the actor, so whoever is creating this notification, and this is going to be the user. So we can reference the self.user, which means that the user is not optional here. And because a comment belongs to a post, we do have access to the post. And here we want to get who we want to notify. So this is going to be the user who is going to receive it. And it's going to be the post and the user. And when the user receives the notification, they need to know what is this notification about or what is it referencing or in the notifications engine, what is it targeting? So we need to have a target, and the target is going to be the self, which is the actual comment. And we may have a second target, and in this case, once a user receives the notification, they all know that they received a comment, but maybe they want to know what do they receive a comment about. And so in this case, we can create a second target, and this second target is going to be the post. So once a user creates a comment, then the author of the post should receive a notification. And so let's say that within our layouts file, we just add into our menu another list item. And this list item is going to be a link. So we have our link to, and then we want to have the notifications. But maybe we want the user to know how many notifications they have. So within here, we could just interplay the number. So we would have the notification, and then the unread count. And we need to pass in the object or the user ID, and this is going to be the current user. However, the problem is if someone has two or more notifications, then this should be pluralized. So we will use the pluralize method, and this takes in an integer followed by a string. And then we could just take the user to the notifications path, which is going to take them to the index action of the notifications. And so now, Logged in as the user john.do at example.com, we will go to this post and then we'll add a comment. And within here, I've entered the comment with notification and then I'll create the comment. And then immediately you see that we have one notification. And if we click on the notification, we'll see this issue where we're missing a partial under the views notifications post. And here it is a post because that was our notification type. So within our views, I've created a post partial.html.erb. And within here, we can give it some headings and some classes. So I'll leave this up to you on how you want to style the classes. But within here, the important bits to know is that we have access to a object called the notification. And this notification is going to be the actual object or record that was stored in the database that we can then act on. So if we want to get the actor, who is the person who caused the notification to be generated, maybe we want to display their email address. And if you want to create a link to that user, then you would need to use the main app path. And then we can go to our user path and then pass in that notification actor. We can then have it say something like has commented in, and then we may want to reference our post. So we can pass in a link to with the notification, and this is going to be our second target which again, the second target is our post. And then maybe if you have a title of that post or something, then you would want to enter it in there. But in this simple application, the post just has a content field and then the comments have a content field. And to get to this, we again use our main app and we have to pass in the user post path. And this is really just because of how we had set up our routes. 
And to pass in the user who created the post, we could do the second target, which is going to reference our post and then dot user. However, in our comment model, which created this notification, we know that the post user is being passed into the user ID. So we can just simply do the notification user and then the notification second target. And again, this will just vary based on how your routes are set up. But the important part is that we are referencing our main application. So we have access to those routes within this engine. And finally, we can then create our notification text, which this is going to reference our target because our target was the actual comment. And then we just want to put in our content. And so now recreating the new comment, we now have our one notification. And when we click on our notification, we have our john.do at example.com has commented in test with the comment comment with notification. So we can click on these and this will take us back to our main application and to the relevant spaces. We can then clean all or we can just navigate out of here. But you can see that as soon as we come to our all notifications, then it clears out the number. But if we clean all, then it deletes the notifications and they are no longer accessible. And as you're working with the notifications, you may find that you need to change how the notification is being handled or how some of the views look like. So we do have some generators with the controllers, and this is going to create the notifications controller under the notifications folder within the controllers folder. We can also generate the notification views, and this is going to, within our app views, create the notifications folder. In our case, it already exists because we had our post partial in there, but then you see that it creates a notification partial, and it also creates our index as well as some style sheets. And so I won't go into this too much, but here you can see where we have the translation for the all notifications that we saw within the web app, and then also the link to the clear all, and then it just runs a notification clear path. And then it loops through each group of the notification, and then it's just rendering out the partial. And the main part of the partial that you need to know about is when it renders the partial, it's rendering out with the path and then the notification type. And within the notifications controller, we can see that the notifications that are being grouped by the created at date. So if you wanted to change it to maybe group it by the type of notification, like a post or a comment or a follow, then you could do that here within the index action. Or if you want to just see it by the list of date ascending or descending, then you have that options as well. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, Check out driftandruby.com.